Good morning everybody and welcome to our worship this morning. It's great to have you with us. Welcome to St Paul's and St Stephen's morning worship. Mm. And anyone else who's um, gate crashed our party, yeah. which is wonderful. Uh, we know we have people that watch from all over the place, so uh, good morning. Uh, as you might have gathered, this is actually a recorded morning um, because Justin's this morning is at St Matthew. St. Oh, St. Thomas's. St. I've got my wrong, got my disciples muddled up. St. Yeah. Thomas's this morning, so we thought we'd record in advance so that um, I wouldn't get too stressed by the tech. Uh, so I thought he could be confused by the tech instead. But anyway, I hope you've had a good week and enjoyed yeah. this beautiful weather. Beautiful if weather. Rather chilly. Yeah, and we're still very much in the season of Easter in the church calendar. Um, we're still giving thanks. For the risen Lord and his mm -hmm. defeat of death sin and sickness and so we're that's where we're sort of we're still in that kind of period post resurrection but Jesus has not ascended mm -hmm. yet into heaven yeah. so you'll pick up the the story and the theme as we go on um, it's going to be very exciting mm -hmm. it's an exciting story so you'll need your Bible, won't you, probably? We shall, and if you can find Luke 24, that is where we're going to, right at the end of Luke, almost the last bit. Uh, so that's it's a rather exciting noise happening outside. I'm sorry if you can hear that. Um, I think they're jet washing or just drilling generally. So if you can hear background noise, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but that's the joy of living in a city. Uh, so, yeah, so Luke 24, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke is the four, third um, gospel to find so if you can find that we're reading it from the good news a version and uh, so yeah get finding get ready to worship God hallelujah Christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah Jesus welcomes everyone. Are you ready to meet Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Yes. So loving Lord, you bring order out of the chaos of the world and in our lives. Meet with us, we pray today in Jesus' name. Change us and send us out to fill your world with love and light and laughter through Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen.
today is from Luke 24, beginning at verse 13. On that same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometres from Jerusalem, and they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. And as they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him and somehow they did not recognise him. Jesus said to them, what are you talking to each other about as you walk along? They stood still with sad faces. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening in these last days? What things? he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. The man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to, the, to be sentenced to death and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Now, some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but they couldn't find his body. They came back saying they'd seen a vision of angels who told them that he was alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, oh, how foolish you are, how slow you are to believe everything the prophet said. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the book of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going on further, but they held him back, saying, Oh, stay with us. The day is almost over and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing, and then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, wasn't it like a fire burning in us when, we talk, when he talked to us on the road and explained the scripture to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others and saying, the Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two of them explained to them what had happened on the road and how they recognised the Lord when he broke the bread. There is a real joy about recording. Because <gasps> uh, when we do it live, we occasionally make mistakes um, and we just keep going. Anyway, enough about all that. I needn't have been honest. I could have what have I done? I'm not sure. But what people might discover is that we might be the other way around. <laughs> because we we tried on one device and now we're trying... We're mixing it up a bit. On a different, different device. Different camera because work. Because it froze. So who knows? Who knows? Oh, don't but kick the table. Point one. <laughs> Today, what a fantastic story uh, we've heard. And every great fantastic story deserves three fantastic points and crafts. Mm. And the craft uh, this morning is all about heart and uh, sounds a bit mm. but it's just a simple fairly simple mm. craft this morning around drawing a heart the point one is Jesus's heart for us mm. uh, Jesus saw his disciples and he then went and spent time with them that's because Jesus has a great big heart a heart full of love a heart big enough for each one of us um, his heart is full of love for us. So we thought we'd go for more of a sort of collage. This, whoa, whoa. The table. Uh, a collage this morning. And um, so you're going to need um, a sort of piece of card, a sort of A4 kind of thing. If you've got some red paper, because we're going for hearts today, um, we're going to draw a heart. Best way to do that is to fold a piece of paper in half and then cut a shape of a heart a half like that and then cut it out and then it'll then be symmetrical um, and so the idea is that we're going to stick that on our piece of paper don't fill it completely 
because we're going to then stick some words on the edge. So it's a kind of growing picture today um, of, um, but first of all, looking at God's love for us. So heart making. So when someone who is deemed very important or special makes time for us, it makes us feel really good about life and about ourselves. It, it seems almost too good to be true. It's as though we're waiting for the inevitable, for them to pick up their phone or look at their watch uh, or tell you they've got another meeting to rush on to, they're needed elsewhere. But hang on, it, it seems to be true. They want to stay. They've not been distracted by anything or by anyone else. They're totally focused on us. So on Good Friday afternoon, they took him down from the cross and he was dead, as dead as a man can be. And on Sunday afternoon, lo and behold, Jesus walked most of the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus with two of his followers. He'd broken through the death barrier. He was alive and well once more on planet Earth. The two disciples that he encounters, the two followers, they're not happy bunnies and they're pretty much not the only ones, really. And I came across this sentence, it's not my own, and it's a bit wordy, but I, I like it. The heartbreaking perplexity of God-given hopes apparently wrecked by God-ordained circumstances is a reality for many Christians today. As Jesus draws alongside these two disciples, he's interested in relationship and friendship. And so he naturally asks, what is it you're talking about? And in response, he gets one of those oh, almost eye rolling moments. Don't you know? And at that point, they share their concerns and their story and their troubles. But had they declined to open up, I don't know whether Jesus would have been able to help them. But when they poured out their hearts to him, their healing began. And so we want to ask this morning, have you ever poured your heart out to Jesus? And in doing so, found that his heart is big enough. His heart is strong enough to take whatever we tell him. Jesus invests, the risen Jesus invests time with these two disciples. I just find that absolutely crazy the motivation is relationship and a profound love for them and Jesus still makes time for us his followers even when we fear the worst even when we fail to work out what's really going on surely he was in a hurry just to meet some other disciples before going back into heaven and yet he seems to have uh, no real agenda, no rush, no time limit. He's there for them. He's the best listener. Jesus will always let you talk. And if he directs the conversation at all, it's always to scripture. And I think it's interesting, uh, probably done too much Bible study or vicar time, vicar factory time. But I think it's interesting that there's three of them now walking together and it reflects God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, a God who's all about relationship. But for Jesus, this isn't just a journey to make. He's there with a purpose to restore hope, to build faith and to reveal truth. In the words of my favourite rapper, Keanu West, I don't know whether he's my favourite rapper. I don't, I don't have he's a He's the only rapper. one you know. He's about the only one I know. <laughs> And this is about the only song I know, and it's an old one by him called Jesus Walks With Me, and I'm not going to perform it now for you, but I do like it. Uh, I like it because it really sums it up what it's all about. Jesus is with us. He walks with us, reassures us, and he builds these two disciples back up. Sometimes when Jesus is walking with us, we might not recognise him, but we should because he's so easy to talk to. And so easy to get along with. You won't find him distracted by his phone or by the telly. He's not bored because he's heard it all before. You have his full attention and he is listening to you. He's come alongside you, drawn near, and he has time to spare. He has time on his hands because you matter to him. Your struggles, questions and disappointments matter to him. He listens 
but he also wants to move us on from those struggles and disappointments. And this story is simply about Jesus's great heart for his friends, his people, his disciples, those that actually follow him, but really he's been following them, pursuing them with his love, taking the initiative. He finds them. And so I think we've said it quite a few mm -hmm. times about being found by God. Allow yourself to be found by God. Stop for a minute. Ask some questions. And as you chat and think things through, you may well find Jesus joining in the conversation too. Yeah, I, I would think it's amazing that he explained all the scriptures. I mean, can you imagine? No. I wouldn't have wanted him to stop. No wonder they said, please don't go on. Please come in and we'll have a, you know. We'll they were enjoying it's his amazing. company. And yeah, his company is, now, is, is fantastic, mm -hmm. isn't it? We're going to go straight on to point two this morning. But let me just show you. Oh, so yes. this is where we've got this to. Is the heart. So we've got our heart here. So here it is. Um, and I've stuck it on like that. It is quite symmetrical. You think it's got slight bumps on the side. Amazing. But there we are. Um, and so, um, yes. So Great point two. Point two. Mm. Jesus's heart isn't just in his body. It's not just his heart. <laughs> his heart, as we listen and walk with him, becomes our heart too. Jesus's heart in us because he's investing this time and this truth and this love into us because we're open and available and ready to listen. We don't decline the invitation. We open up to him and his heart becomes our heart too. And the important thing about that in, and the great thing about that is that we've got this thing called the Bible. And in the Bible, that is where God pours out his heart. Yeah. Um, and as Justin said, I think, yes, as Justin talks about the whole idea that it's actually in us and we can have it and we can own it in us. And isn't it great to, when you've got little Bible verses, and maybe you know a few, you, you know, the one that springs to mind, the Lord is my shepherd, if you're feeling a bit low, or other ones, you know, God is great when you want to praise him. But there are times in our lives when it's really important to have some go-to verses, I would call them. And um, and so in the notes that will be online uh, for you to find, there is a whole list of these notes um, and these Bible verses that are just really helpful. So what we're going to do is, on the side of our love heart, we're going to write sort of arrows very good kind of coming out so that then you can look at them and go oh, i'm having a bad day today oh i know it says in james one or something this is a really good verse to look at and i think um i don't know how many of you grew up in sort of churchy circles when you used to have your bible um, and it was like find this verse and try and open it and find it because problem is when you're a Christian and when you become to know Jesus you don't get a little sort of chip in your head saying these are all the good key verses we actually have to sort of study and no one likes the s word for study really perhaps you love it but actually it's a question of learning the Gideons were really good people they put Bibles into hotels and at the beginning of these Gideon Bibles are a list of if you're feeling any of these worries these are the verses to look for so we're going to give you some of these now um, um they are online as well so you can find them um but so if you're worried matthew 6 verse 25 and 27 if you're facing challenges well that's all of us 2 corinthians 4 16 to 18 if you really want to live for god john 1 john 3 verses 16 and 18 if you want to live a purer life, Psalm 119 verses 1 to 16. Forgiveness, that's a nice big one, 1 John 1, 5 to 10. And if you've got times of trouble, well, I think we could all look up this one and have this one in capitals, uh, James 1, 2 to 8. So write them as arrows round the edge and then it's going to be like a collage to put on your wall, put in the downstairs loo, put somewhere where you can mm. look at it um, and be reminded that God is good and he's got everything covered that's right god mm. is good and it's important we go on about it most weeks to know our bibles the great bible teacher of yesteryear apparently was this guy called william evans and he said cut the bible anywhere and it bleeds don't try that at home but it's the truth really that the blood of jesus stains every page of scripture every book both the new as well as the old testament too 
Evans observed that the atonement, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, is the scarlet cord running through every page in the entire Bible. The Bible is read with redemption truth, he said. And Jesus himself uh, intimates that this connectedness, this bloodline of redemption, after his atoning death and resurrection, he approaches these two disciples, one who has a name, the other one I like to call Bob. Some people think it might have been uh, Cleopas's wife, but they were really overcome with discouragement as they were walking to a town near Jerusalem. They were disillusioned over Jesus's execution and they didn't recognise him by face, nor did they expect uh, to hear what they were about to hear. They tried to explain to this stranger what had happened, even though they were totally unaware of what really had happened. Jesus was risen and was standing there amongst them. And he says these words, O foolish one, slow of heart, interesting use of the word heart, slow of heart to believe that all the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then Luke explained, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. It was this sort of post-resurrection message, the very first sermon after Jesus had risen from the dead. And it was all about how Jesus was anticipated and predicted in the Old Testament. I don't know. It must have included highlights like Abraham's near sacrifice of his son, uh, he probably would have told them about the exodus again from Egypt, about how that kind of <coughs> prefigures freedom from slavery for all mankind, made possible by his death. Perhaps he described the blood sacrifices of Le Leviticus and some of the Psalms, which are very messianic in nature. Actual scarlet cords show up in scripture with some interesting overtones. You know, the garments of the high priest and the curtains of the tabernacle in the Old Testament included actual scarlet threads. Looking forward to the work of the Lamb of God. There's the whole story about Rahab and how she helps God's people using a scarlet cord. A scarlet cord, the colour of blood. It worked a little bit like when the Israelites smeared the blood on the doorposts of their homes in Egypt on the night of the Passover, decades before. The main theme of scripture is Jesus. He's the hero of the story. His sacrifice on the cross provides salvation for all of us. And it's this scarlet thread of redemption that's in the whole story. And those of us who've studied scripture and had the privilege, I often knock Vicar Factory, but it's a privilege to study scripture at that level. Because you, you have a chance to end up knowing that this is relevant to our lives and it warms our hearts. In other words, the heart of Jesus begins to beat in us. This is a proper encounter with Jesus. And when we encounter Jesus, it grips our heart with a passion and intensity. Nothing else matters except God's word, the story of his saving power. Our heart is what kind of makes us who we are, defines, directs us. And Solomon famously said in Proverbs 4, keep the heart with all vi vi vigilance. <laughs> vigilance. Thanks, Lucy. Keep the heart with all vigilance. For from it flows the springs of life. The heart is a matter of life. And it's what makes us who we are. The heart drives all we do. And so that's why our heart needs to reflect the heart of our saviour. Max Lucado says, Jesus is pure, we are greedy. He is peaceful, we are hassled. He is spiritual, we are earthbound. The distance between our hearts and his seems so immense. How could we ever hope, he says, to have the heart of Jesus? Already for a surprise? You already do if you've given your life to Jesus. Jesus has given himself to you. 
And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, strange as it seems, we Christians actually do have within us a portion of the very thoughts and mind of Christ. God has great plans for us, even ambitious plans, you might say. The same one who saved us longs to be in this process of remaking our hearts. It's a process. It happens over time and we become more like our saviour. Absolutely. How have you got on well, that? I've written, I've written um, my verses around the edge. It's a bit of a mess. But I was just thinking as Justin was talking that actually this kind of thing of, of Jesus's heart, but our heart being in his heart and we kind of do a sort of a, not a transplant, but like a merging, mm. which I know is totally unscientific. Um, but I was going, now I'm going to draw, actually, a heart within my, the big heart. Because actually, we can put our hearts, our hearts are within God's heart. So actually, um, and then that will lead us on to our third point. Yeah, which we're just about to come to. So point three, our final point about heart Jesus's heart Jesus's heart is for others yes he does stay with the two disciples for some time but he does want to share his heart with everybody he possibly can and um, we need that same heart in us that is for everybody that we are outward facing we can't keep the good news uh, to ourselves our hearts are kind of fired up mm. with a passion for letting everybody know what Jesus mm. has done for us and in the good news version uh, when they reflect on what's happened the disciples say to each other did you not feel your heart burning inside of you so we were kind of thinking rather than this keeping this um, rather flat that let's make some fire coming out so um like set a fire down in my heart which i believe we might be singing i'm not sure i can't remember but uh, that song set a fire down in my mm. heart so that we can actually burn for jesus and i think on thursday for those that watched we were talking about lamps and seeds and the idea that god didn't give us um a, a lamp to hide under a bush or hide under yeah. our beds or you know he's given us a light to shine so we're going to make this kind of i've got some um tissue and some red paper and scrunch up or if you just want to color and you've got some material but just fill that inner bit in here like a fiery thing we've done lots of fire before and we've covered cups and all sorts of things for pentecost oh that's coming up which is exciting um so um yeah it's so make a make a fiery picture and i've got Excellent. some uh some wet glue actually rather than it because it's a bit better or any other glue you'd like to use obviously right okay okay so Fine. eventually uh the penny drops it was jesus all along of course it was and one version of the verse that lucy referred to says didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road and opened up the scriptures that's actually where that sense of burning passion love fire something stirring within us comes from the living word of god and when we encounter the truth and actually the scope of jesus's heart for us our hearts really are set on fire with love for him but things don't end there hearts are ablaze and the fire must spread elsewhere to others no sense of duty in it really no thoughts of oh how are we going to do this no great plans or projects. I'm not knocking those. I'm not knocking courses or schemes for evangelism. But his heart for us and in us is a natural process of leading us with his heart to others. Others must know. Otherwise, if you keep that kind of intensity and passion and excitement within, you'll just explode, I think. The warmth, the heat must spread and it will. I think it might just go out actually well we're have... just coming oh, to that sorry, lucy Justin. she's a great one for uh <laughs> sorry nipping in stealing sorry the thunder uh, joy-filled hearts is what the world really needs around us and what it deserves right now and when we're empty we just need to stop all of us and say have i been walking with jesus have the scriptures been coming alive to us on that walk it's not just one beautiful building, and it is looking beautiful, the church building. 
and it will be finished, but not yet. More about that later. It's not just one beautiful church building that will set Pill alight with a glorious and heavenly joy, because we are the building, all of us individually and together, the place where the presence and glory of God should be seen, known and experienced. When I look around now prayerfully, there seem to me no signs yet of a move of God from what I call our ecclesiastical tradition, our network of churches, the church in Wales. But it can come at any point and we must be ready to play our part. Freely we've received, freely we've got to give it away. When we're connected with Jesus, we must be prepared to leave our mark, or should I say his mark, wherever we go. And that's what happened with the early Christians. If you go on to read the book of Acts, their passion and courage for sharing Jesus was so evident. And many saw that and understood that these men and women had been walking with Jesus. Is that what we're going to be remembered for? When we walk with Jesus, people go, oh, yes, those people, they've been with him doesn't mean a life without problems or challenges as we often say we can even experience depression really low points a lot of anxiety but we can also experience a joy in adversity life even in times of death blaze spirit blaze yes but actually church blaze blaze church blaze let the church actually find themselves strangely warmed within. Before they know it, actually they'll be on fire, setting the world ablaze with the love found in Jesus. Two ways to finish, I want to just mention two ways how to be a red hot Christian. Referring to what Lucy said, uh, we don't want our fire to go out. And if you take a uh, a lump of coal out of a fire it will eventually grow cold and go out so we need to stay amongst the coals as Christians so we've said this and alluded to this a few times over the last couple of months don't give up on church remain however possible make it your mission to stay in fellowship with other Christians with the church that you're part of some people say, well, I've been pretty happy not going to church, actually. Um, Pajama church is quite fun, though, isn't it, Justin? I don't know, really. I don't know. Um, we tend to get dressed because it gets to... better. <laughs> but, but what does that mean, I'm happier when not involved with church? Mm. Come on, where's, where, where is the fulfilment in that? And I just want to say a little word of warning. Don't ever become too proud for church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't need that or it doesn't work for me. Um, don't become too proud. Stay mm. humble. Stay part of that fireplace. We've all got something to give. And I think there's that danger that we feel that I don't want to. But actually, we're all in this, you know, to make a difference. And you, yeah. you might just feel, well, I, what can I bring? You know, but you can bring your heart. And I think that is really powerful. So mm. we're going to just finish in a moment our three points but the other thing how to be a red hot christian is to do the basics well there's no shortcuts there's no you know actually i found i'm a red hot christian and i don't need to read the bible or pray regularly uh, or ask the holy spirit to fill me up that doesn't work um it really doesn't I've if you it really and it yeah, really and, doesn't work <laughs> if you don't do the basics well yeah. you struggle mm -hmm. to feel Hard. Uh, and experience the power of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God in you, not just for you, but for others too. Yeah. So that's our three points. And here is my very fiery heart. And I wrote at the bottom, set a fire down in my heart. But as I thought, well, that actually is just to remind us. So if you've made your collage or you're going to make it in the week, um, put that somewhere where you can be reminded, because I think that's rather fun. We're going to spend some time now in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all your great 
and wonderful promises that are true and they're all yes and amen in our saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you that we're still in this Easter season. The resurrected Jesus wasn't just showing up to a few disciples here and there back in the day. By his Holy Spirit, your son is still showing up and meeting us today. Help mm. us to be ready for those moments that our hearts would be open so that they can be warmed, set on fire and making a difference for you in your world. <clears throat> Think of all the things we're facing as a church, as individuals and together. And we pray that we will make time to walk with Jesus and allow him by his spirit to open up the word of God to us, that we would see scripture with new eyes, that we would be renewed and revived for the journey ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the prayer from the Together at Home. Dear God, thank you for the story of Jesus appearing on the Emmaus Road and to his disciples. Thank you that your plan for Jesus to die for us and come back to life can be found throughout the Bible. Help us to dig deep into your word and learn more about you. Help us to experience it like a fire in our own hearts. We pray for those in the world who don't yet know you, that they would be drawn close to you. Mm. Help us to share your word with others so that they can know your salvation plan too. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now over to Eleanor for our final song.
It's notice time. We always love a notice time. Um, and uh, thank you for joining us this morning. I hope um, it's inspired you. And um, yes, set some fires. But so um, next week, it'll either be recorded or live because um, our building project has not grown to a halt, has had a small delay with uh, the putting the carpet down in the church. We were hoping to be in the church and live streaming on the 25th, which is next Sunday. Um, so we will let you know when that will happen, but it won't be uh, next Sunday. So tune in again for either live or recorded worship here on Facebook. The AVM will be happening. That's our, our annual meeting where we elect the PCC and just um, give the thumbs up and a big round of applause to the treasurer and that kind of thing. And it'd be a very short meeting and it'll be after uh, our service here, uh, but it'll be on Zoom, not on Facebook. If you need the details, then get in touch with me or Lucy Jones as soon as possible. Uh, we'd love you to be there. Mm. Please come to the AVM. Yes. It's not as bad as it sounds. It's great. Mm. And I'll just be sharing uh, a few thoughts on where we've been and where we're going as a church absolutely and then this week is follows the um general pattern of on tuesday we pray uh again on zoom um at 12 o'clock no not on zoom on the on facebook, facebook group. Page, group uh at 12 o'clock um please join us and if you want prayer requests or you would like us, us to pray for things we don't know things telepathically we have to be told i mean god does speak to us but please help us with that uh so do do that on thursday um we will be um having church at 7 30 as well um yes but and please do keep us in your in your prayers uh um just as things move ahead and what to do next and all that kind of thing yeah. um because um it's 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 challenging it's big uh, we went to visit the vicarage this week as well and planning about our move there as well which again is huge and massive and that gary's able to do some bits and bobs in the house which would be great so please keep us in our prayers as we think about how we get all of this stuff down in there so that's going to be quite interesting to say the least so uh thank you very much i hope you have a great week uh and the blessing so let's pray Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for this amazing, wonderful story about our amazing, wonderful Saviour. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that your Son has time for each one of us. He wants to invest in us, help us to be ready when he comes walking with us to open up our hearts and lives to him. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So Justin's going to say a line now and we're going to reply, we are ready. Well, obviously, that's if you are. Um, so go, Justin. Are you ready to go into all the world to share God's love with everyone? We are ready. We are ready. Let's go for it. See you soon.